We're here outside of Books of Wonder, where writer Neil Gaiman and artist Charles Vess are premiering their new book, Blueberry Girl, and the line is halfway down the block already, expecting up to a thousand people today to see Neil Gaiman and Charles Vess. In addition to the signing, Neil Gaiman will do a reading of Blueberry Girl, and Charles Vess will explain his process in creating the lushly painted art, which will all be on display and for sale through March 29th at Books of Wonders. It's a special sale in which a portion of the proceeds will benefit RAIN, an organization dedicated to preventing violence against women and assisting victims of attacks. Neil Gaiman's seminal comic book work is The Sandman from Vertigo, ten volumes of brilliant fantasy and mythology, and is currently in the middle of Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader Batman storyline for DC. Neil recently confirmed that his next comic book project will be a Metamorpho miniseries with artist Michael Allred. He won the prestigious Newbery Award last year for his novel The Graveyard Book, and his novel Coraline was just released in a graphic novel version illustrated by P. Craig Russell, and as a stop-motion animated theatrical film helmed by Nightmare Before Christmas director Henry Selleck. Okay, everyone. We appreciate your having waited and been so patient. New York traffic being what it is. Neil is here. It was our first store 28 years ago. When Charles came in and we met, we talked, and I said, and he was very busily doing comic books and things of that nature. I said to him, Charles, what you really should do is a picture book. And he was right on it. <laughs> but of course, uh, he had to wait a little while for Neil to write something for him. And Neil came and I think I don't have to introduce to anyone here. His work has been enjoyed, celebrated, awarded, and uh, generally uh, um, enriched all of us for oh, well over a decade now. And um, I'm thrilled that after he and Charles had collaborated on Sandman and Stardust, they've finally done a picture book together. And with that, I'll turn it over to Neil. Hello. Um, thank you all for coming out. Sorry I was a bit late. Thing, things got unavoidable. Um, this started out for me um, in about August of 2000 in a hotel in Las Vegas. And I was staying in a hotel in Las Vegas because hotels in Las Vegas are really cheap. Well, they were back then. And I had a book to finish. I was working on American Gods. And I had this idea that I should just go and find a hotel and hole up in it and do nothing but write. And uh, I got to this hotel in Las Vegas, which I picked just because it was cheap. And uh, the person on the front desk said, you're here for two weeks. And I said, yes. And he said, nobody's ever been here for two weeks. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to be writing a novel. And he said, really? And I said, yes. And he said, well, in that case, you'll want a proper corner room, won't you? So I had this really nice corner room, um, because nobody had ever come to write a novel there before. And the phone rang one day. And it was my friend, Tori Amos. And she was called to tell me, that she had her due date for her baby, she had her ultrasound, she knew it was a girl, and she said, would I write something for her that was a prayer, and would I write something that was just something that would be small and magical for her daughter to be? So I did, and it was a lovely thing to do in Las Vegas. <laughs> I suspect most prayers that are uttered in Las Vegas are not about that. <laughs> and uh, once it was written, I thought well, I should get it beautifully calligraphed and put up by her bed. So I gave it to a friend of mine named John Singer. And I said, John, would you, would you, you have the most beautiful handwriting, would you do a calligraphed version of this? And he did it twice. Just the first time, just to make sure he got it right, and the second time, the finished version. 
And so I took his trial version, and I put it up in my office on the filing cabinet. I just taped it to the corner of the filing cabinet. And people would come in to the office, and they'd stand, and they'd read it. And then they'd say, can I have a copy of that? And I'd say, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'd get some copies of it. And I would do readings. Some of you may even have been at readings. So I would read Blue Bird Girl, and I would always say before I told them the story of how it got written, and I'd always say, just do me a favor, no MP3s, just for this little bit. Don't take it. This, is, this was for Tori and her daughter, and let's just keep it private. And people did, which I think is actually kind of awesome. Um, but after each of these readings, people would sidle over to me and say, I have a friend who's very pregnant. Could she have a copy? And I always say yes. So I would start to turn into somebody whose profession was no longer writing. It was just giving people copies of Blueberry Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and at the Fiddler's Green Sandman Convention in 2004, Charles Vess and I were guests, and we did that thing where we talk. And <laughs> at some point during Fiddler's Green, I think I actually read Blueberry Girl, and then we got chatting about it a bit more, and somehow, by the end of the convention, we had decided we were going to do it as a picture book. And that we were going to, it was, it was going to happen. And I ran it by Tori, and she was very happy with the idea. And Charles immediately got to work, bashed out the pages. <laughs> I, and actually, I just, before I read it, I want to say a quick thank you to the incredibly patient people at Harper Children's <laughs> who uh, who really were. Deadlines would come, deadlines would go, and they never lost faith. And thank you. And this is Blueberry Girl. And it's the only time I've ever read. Stood up knowing that I was about to read an entire book <laughs> to an audience and that I would still be finished in two minutes and thirty seconds. <laughs> ladies of light and ladies of darkness and ladies of never you mind, this is a prayer for a blueberry girl. First, may you ladies be kind. Keep her from spindles and sleeps at sixteen. Let her stay waking and wise. Nightmares at three, or bad husbands at thirty. These will not trouble her eyes. Dull days at forty, false friends at fifteen. Let her have brave days and truth. Let her go places that we've never been. Trust and delight in her youth. Ladies of grace, and ladies of favor, and ladies of merciful night. This is a prayer for a blueberry girl. Grant her your clearness of sight. Words can be worrisome, people complex. Motives and manners unclear. Grant her the wisdom to choose her path right, free from unkindness and fear. Let her tell stories and dance in the rain, somersault, tumble, and run. Her joys must be high as her sorrows are deep. Let her grow like a weed in the sun. Ladies of paradox, ladies of measure, ladies of shadows that fall. This is a prayer for a blueberry girl, words written clear on a wall. Help her to help herself, help her to stand, help her to lose and to find. Teach her we're only as big as our dreams. Show her that fortune is blind. Truth is a thing she must find for herself, precious and rare as a pearl. Give her all these and a little bit more. Gifts for a blueberry girl. <laughs>